So we're going to ask you to hold questions for the makers and the participants today until the end of the event. You're going to have the chance after these presentations to go and experience the works themselves firsthand, and you'll be able to talk to the makers at that time. So we're going to invite, um, the makers are going to come up onto the stage. We're going to talk to them for a couple minutes after they've shared their visions with you, um, and then we're going to go and, and celebrate all that they've achieved. But before we get into all of those formalities, just um, starting on my far left, your right, is Emily McGinley. Emily is the co-founder of the indie game development studio Big Pants. She's a member of the Hand Eye Society, which is a not-for-profit coalition of projects and people that support Toronto's video game communities. She's the co-founder and uh, organizer of the Toronto Indie Game Development Jam, also known as Toe Jam, which is celebrating the end of its sixth year. Uh, Toe Jam, yeah, it's a truly uh, fantastic achievement. Toe Jam and its corresponding Toe Jam Arcade are free annual game making event uh, open to the public and they showcase the results of Toe Jam in this arcade, uh, in an arcade format um, for public to experience and we're proud to be able to announce that the Toe Jam Arcade will launch tonight, later tonight as part of Digifest at OCAD. So we encourage you when the celebrations here um, start to wrap to, to make your way that way and, and carry on with the festival. Uh, Emily has also helped organize and coordinate various uh, indies and several shows including OCAT's start last year. So welcome to Emily. Thank you. Uh, beside Emily is David Bouchard. David is an assistant professor at Ryerson University in the New Media Program in the School of Image Arts. He also has uh, served as part-time faculty at the CFC Media Lab in the TELUS Interactive Art and Entertainment Program. Uh, David is a brilliant and prolific media artist. His work is really exceptional, and uh, I will encourage you to go find him at uh, deadpixel.ca later. Um, his clients have included the NFB, Pixel Farmers, Corbett Design, CIEO Creative, Interaxon, and Esky. Uh, David professionally and personally explores the potentials of computational form uh, in hardware and software. So welcome, David. And beside me, certainly, um, He's last in these introductions, but certainly not least, and probably known um, at least by reputation to many of you, is Tom Igo. Tom is a maker, hacker, educator, and a, a champion of the idea that people can empower themselves uh, through exploration and making with technology. He's the author of two books for makers, uh, one entitled Physical Computing that he authored with Dan O'Sullivan and another Making Things Talk. He's a regular contributor to Make Magazine, teaches at the Interactive Telecommunications Program at NYU, and is co-founder of the Arduino platform uh, that has made hacking accessible to so many artists and designers. Um, he's a fan of Women's Flat Track Roller Derby, lives in Brooklyn, and we are truly honored to have him uh, joining us on this panel today. Welcome, Tom. We have a number of presentations to show you, and just before we bring up our first making team, I'm going to ask David and Emily just to provide a little more context to the event and uh, the outcomes. Um, I'll start. Sure. Um, the idea of game developers collaborating with hard hardware hackers came to us because we wanted to experiment with how video games could evolve in non-traditional ways and focus both not just on the software but the hardware. Um, video games are great vehicles for expression. They can provide really intense immersive experiences and a lot of video games focus on the visuals, the audio, the narrative to achieve that. But we thought that maybe changing how people interact with games could also be just as profound. Um, the games industry is already experimenting with um, how even simplest gameplay can be elevated by, say, full body interactions. Um, think Wii Sports or Dance Central. But presenting more varied options um, for physical input like buttons and dials and switches or new methods of interaction like optical control. Um, that could engage players further than the literal sports or dance implementations and span games across more genres just than just your obvious categories. So when TIFF Nexus approached us, um, we saw the opportunity to have members of two separate communities um, share their different experiences and creatively influence each other in video games. It was a chance to, for us to provide a really supportive environment so that participants could learn, experiment, and um, innovate. So the Peripherals Initiative is just our first step. 
the more experienced we become with collaborating, the more familiar we become with each other's talents in the different communities. I think the more new gameplays will arise that allow for new expressions and new experiences. That was, that was pretty complete. Um, <laughs> I'll add a few I things to this. I, I think um, I, I was uh, brought into the project pretty late, so I take uh, no credit whatsoever for the idea. Uh, but I, I got really excited about it myself. Um, a lot of the work that I do is, is multidisciplinary and, and cross-sector. So I'm really interested from a, an academic standpoint, how do we foster this kind of collaboration? Um, and also, how do you kind of run these types of cross-disciplinary uh, workshops, which, as it turns out, has a few uh, challenges um, of their own. So I thought that was a really, really attractive idea. Um, also, from the perspective of a university, I thought this was a great project because it, it seamlessly wove together um, different universities working on the same, uh, the same initiative, but also a lot of the community organizations um, in, in a pretty seamless way, so mixing together hacker spaces um, and you know, two different universities of camp on, camp um, on in Toronto and the Hanai Society and a bunch of other partners. Uh, so I'm hoping we can see a lot more of that in, in the future. Um, and finally, I'm not going to talk for too long, but the, uh, I think the other thing that it's really relevant with the peripheral initiative is uh, this now seems like a really good time to be doing these types of projects. Um, now more than ever, it, there's a lot of tools that are accessible for prototyping in hardware, uh, things like the Arduino, but many other, other platforms. Um, so it's actually becoming accessible to the point where it's, it's very feasible to have a workshop um, with people who are both experienced and inexperienced uh, kind of working together, producing these really amazing high quality prototypes in, uh, in a short amount of time, really. So that's a, uh, a good time to do this. Uh, this kind of these kinds of explorations, these kinds of works, um, and and finally, it's not often that you get in a situation where you can just get uh, people who never met each other before uh, coming from two different different communities, um, different sets of uh, skills, uh, different languages, even and vocabularies, to just get to spend some quality time together and work on a project uh, for the heck of it, uh, with you know a little bit of money. It does not doesn't cost that much to run. Um, and no uh, expectations that um, you know they necessarily have to innovate. The expectations was they needed to have a level of commitment, but beyond that, um, it was really all about experimenting and just trying new things and stepping outside of their comfort zone. And uh, this is something we should all try to do more often, I think. So. Awesome.